Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay. Over the past few months at The Real News, we've covered many aspects of the Libyan war, mostly critical of the NATO intervention, which is clearly illegal and using humanitarian language to cover up imperialist objectives. If the mission had really been about saving Benghazi and not creating an even more compliant regime than Gaddafi's, there were ways to do that, which would not have resulted in so much loss of life. But the NATO agenda does not mean that the people of Libya have no right to overthrow a dictatorship. There's been some criticism of our Libyan coverage in the comments section of our website. It's mostly focused on reports from the field that show Libyans applauding NATO strikes in support of the rebellion. I think when journalists in the field report on what they see, it's ridiculous for people to demand they adjust it or present it in a way that serves some propaganda position. If the reporters see that people in Benghazi support the NATO intervention, they should say so. It's perfectly understandable why such people would appreciate NATO support, whatever its real motives. In a war, people seek allies, for better or worse, where they can. It's one thing to oppose the NATO-US intervention, which I think people here should do, and another to discredit and attack thousands of ordinary Libyan people who want an end to the dictatorship. What the leadership of the rebellion turns out to be made of is yet to be seen. There are clearly some very shady characters, CIA-connected types, opportunists from the former regime, and so on. There may also be some legitimate representatives of the people. At any rate, it's not up to us, it's up to the Libyans. I think we should oppose imperialist adventures dressed up as humanitarian causes, and we should oppose dictatorships dressed up as anti-imperialists while pursuing neoliberal self-enrichment. Our concern first and foremost should be for international law. The UN resolution was a blank check to organize regime change in the interests of Anglo-American and French imperialism. The Russians, Chinese and other governments on the UN Security Council didn't really much care what happened as long as they were not shut out of the oil post-war. We should care. This is a terrible precedent. We should demand an immediate end to all NATO involvement in Libya. As a news organization, we'll continue to report what we see. There is a popular aspect to this rebellion, and if that's what our journalists observe, we'll say so. We've also reported on allegations of war crimes against the rebels and the pro-Gaddafi troops. There's evidence of targeting of black migrant workers by some rebels. There's evidence of NATO operatives on the ground directing and training rebels. There appears to be significant numbers of Libyans who still support Gaddafi. Real life is complicated. The rebellion is made up of many diverse political, tribal, and class elements. And while the forces of reaction are very strong, the people are armed and have fought for their rights. The conventional army is no more, which is what's so troubling for NATO leaders who are making noises about putting troops on the ground to create a transition to law and order. They're afraid of what kind of state emerges from an armed people demanding democracy. We'll see if the popular will asserts itself, or if forces from within the neoliberal elite sell out the Libyan people. Again, 